Well, hello there. It's Ben Hardy here. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about what's going to happen to the car market in the next 60 days. I've seen a number of channels talking about how you shouldn't buy a car for 60 days, 90 days, 120 days. And if you wait, then the deals are going to be so much better. And so let's actually talk about what will practically, realistically happen in 60 days if you decide to wait. Before we get in this video though, as always, if you wanna save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. And then if you wanna see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. Let's get into it. So first off, let's start with the used car market in terms of what will happen in 60 days. And well, if you divide 60 by seven, because well, a week is seven days, then you'll get 8.5, which means that 60 days is eight and a half weeks. And with the declines that we see in the used market from a week to week basis, this means that used cars will most likely be somewhere between four to five ish percent less expensive in 60 days compared to today from a wholesale perspective. However, from a retail perspective, the declines are probably not going to be nearly as high because last year, for example, we saw wholesale values decline by about 20%, but retail values only declined by around eight to 9%. So about half, right? And so if you just basically push that trend over the course of the next 60 days, then you can kind of expect the same thing where wholesale values might be down by four or five, maybe even 6%. And then retail values might be down by one, two, maybe 3%. And so yes, on a used car, you will most likely, well not most likely, you will be able to buy it for less money in 60 days compared to today, but it's not like the used car price is going to be slashed in half. It's gonna go down by a few percent. So if you're looking at a $50,000, well actually that's not a good example because the average used car is not $50,000. Let's say that you're looking at a $25,000 used car and let's say that it declines by a whopping 2% in the next 60 days with the retail value. 500 bucks. That's what you'd save, right? So I'm not saying that you shouldn't wait or that you should wait, but what I'm saying is that you should probably set your expectations in line with reality, with what's happening in the car market. And so that's that's just what the used car market's doing. It's this slow, long, boring decline, and that's just going to continue. And so you're just going to have to play the long game if you want to, you know, be able to quote unquote pick up a used car for really cheap. And so instead of being like, oh, I'll wait 60 days, my deal will come, understand that you're probably gonna have to wait more like 360 days and then your deal will come with a used car. And speaking of wholesale values and used cars, well, if you happen to have a vehicle that you're planning on trading in and you're waiting 60 days to do it, well, your vehicle is gonna be worth less money tomorrow than it is today. Again, if those wholesale values decline by four to 6%, whatever it may be in the next 60 days, your vehicle is gonna be worth four to 6% less. So let's say that your vehicle today is worth $25,000 in 60 days. It's most likely going to be worth, you know, somewhere in the $23,000 range. And like I've said over the course of several videos, dealers are being way less aggressive on trade-ins than they have been over the last couple of years, especially in conjunction to wholesale values. And so if wholesale value on your car declines by let's say 6% in 60 days, the chances of a dealership offering only 6% less is significantly low. Chances are they'll actually offer something more like eight to 10 to 12, maybe even 15% less tomorrow than they do today. Because again, they're just trying to pad themselves because of these market declines that we are experiencing. And so with the vehicle that you're planning on trading in, just understand that as this market declines, so does the value of your vehicle on a day-to-day -day basis. And so especially if you're planning on purchasing a used car, your situation doesn't really get any better because let's say that your car declines by 6% and then the retail value on the used car you're looking at buying declines by 2%. Well, your deal just got worse by 4%, right? Math is math. And so I'm not saying that you should just go in and jump in and buy now, but I'm saying that you should set your expectations in line with reality. And the reality is if you're gonna trade your used car for another used car, the situation until the market really levels off is just gonna keep getting crappier and crappier as time goes on. And this leads us into talking about new cars because I think that this is a little bit more exciting because you know with the used car market it's just slow, steady, boring declines. But with the new car market, 
we're probably going to see a little bit more than just slow, steady declines. I mean, this month already, there have been a lot of dealers representing several different brands that have gone from selling their product for over MSRP to MSRP, and some are selling them for significantly under MSRP. And so from a dealership discount perspective, we're actually at what you would consider quote unquote rock bottom. I know that that's hard to believe, but you have dealerships that are selling brand new vehicles at invoice, minus hold back and minus sum on top of that. And if you don't understand dealership lingo, Invoice is what people think is cost on a vehicle, but realistic cost is once you subtract hold back. And then if the dealership gets any sort of kickback, that could also you know, be taken into account in terms of actual cost into a vehicle. But regardless, all that you really need to know as the average consumer in the world is that there are dealers that are currently selling their vehicles on their in their inventory at dead cost, and some are even selling them under what their dead cost is. So dealerships are losing money to sell new product. And so the only way that there's gonna be more discount on this product is if their respective manufacturers release rebates on that product. Now the chances of these manufacturers releasing rebates in the coming months is increasing as time goes on. Because with certain brands, you see that inventory is continuing to increase as time goes by. And so this will push manufacturers to release incentives because their dealers are gonna say, hey, uh, we don't really like they ultimately have to take the cars that come in but they're like hey we, we don't really want to take these truckloads anymore because we can't sell the inventory that we have like give us some incentives so we can get rid of these vehicles and then we'll be able to more readily take on the vehicles that you are sending out to us what you have to remember is that auto manufacturers are supposed to really be good at one thing and one thing only and that is producing cars and well over the last couple of years they haven't exactly been the best at that but since they're supposed to focus on just producing cars, they don't want to focus so much on the pricing dynamics associated with those cars. And so if their dealerships say, hey, we need some discounts, generally speaking, generally speaking, they're going to listen. And so in 60 days, there are most likely going to be more incentives than there are today. And so although we are at, like I said earlier, rock bottom with the dealership pricing, we aren't necessarily at rock bottom with manufacturing pricing. And so with new cars, the longer you wait, the more that it could benefit you. However, with that being said, you need to understand that not all vehicles are going to receive incentives. There are some vehicles that just never get incentives. It doesn't matter what the market's doing because they are produced in so few numbers that there's no reason for a manufacturer to ever incentivize them. Or they have a big enough enthusiast base that again, a manufacturer doesn't have to incentivize them. A good example is going to be like the Ford F-150 Raptor, right? You can currently see that there is tons of them going for over MSRP, but you can find deals at MSRP. And if the Raptor market really, really softened, then the most that you'll ever see in terms of quote unquote discount is from dealerships and they might discount them maybe a thousand, two thousand dollars off of MSRP, but you're you're never gonna see anything more than that. And honestly, with how many people want Raptors, I, the likelihood of any dealer discounting them off of MSRP is, is next to none. And if you want a more you know affordable example, look at like the new Honda Civic Type R, the new GR Corolla, right? Those are in the $40,000 range. There are dealers that will sell them at MSRP and you know, the chances of Honda or Toyota ever releasing a rebate on those cars, it, it's just not going to happen. Um, and if you want something that I guess is a little bit more of a normal vehicle, Toyota RAV4, right? RAV4 TRD. There's never going to be an incentive on a RAV4 TRD. Toyota doesn't build that many of them. So if there is anything that is, I guess, special about the vehicle that you're looking into where it's just not produced in higher volume amounts, where it's not a run-of-the-mill vehicle, then it's most likely never going to see any sorts of rebates or incentive on it. And so the best possible pricing that you'll ever get on that vehicle with certain vehicles will be MSRP. And with some vehicles, there could be some discounts off of MSRP if you find the right dealership at the right time. But that's going to be a lot of legwork for you as a customer to put that whole deal together. So understand that, again, you could save yourself a bit of money, but you're going to have to work for that extra money that you're going to save. So putting everything together, if you decide to wait for the next 60 days to buy a car, you could potentially be in a worse situation in 60 days than you are today. If you, for example, are planning on trading your used car for another used car. However, if you're looking into buying a new car, Yes, the deals that are going to be happening on new cars in the next 60 days will most likely be better than what we're seeing today because 
Although dealerships on certain new vehicles are at their quote unquote rock bottom pricing, manufacturers surely are not because there's not a lot of manufacturer incentives out and about in the world. And there will most likely be more of those in the next 60 days. And then the 60 days after that, there will probably be more and more as this year continues. And so I just think that, I, I just think it's kind of silly that it's like, oh, wait 60 days and the market's gonna completely flip and everything's going to be dirt cheap. And it's like, that's not like if you are actually analyzing the market, then you'll see that that is not what is happening. What is happening is a slow, steady, boring decline with the used market from a wholesale perspective and from a retail perspective. And then when it comes to new cars, if you actually look at the values, you're starting to see something similar to an extent. Now, the new cars that have big price premiums over MSRP, those are the ones that have like these huge value losses, but it's like, well, the vehicle was going for way over MSRP. So of course it's gonna take a big value hit one month to the next if buying demand dries up, right? If a dealership has a car sitting in their lot and they're asking $25,000 over sticker and nobody buys and they wanna get rid of it, well, they'll just pull it right down to sticker price if they really wanna get rid of it. And again, since it's a new car, even at sticker price, the dealership is still making some level of profit. Uh, it's not like used cars where, you know, the dealership has to pay market value and if they wanna drop the price a lot, then that, puts them in a position where they're losing money. It's not the case with new cars. New cars are different. Dealers have set costs that they pay for the new car. Every single dealership pays the same amount of money. And so that's why you might see quote unquote more volatility within the new car market where prices might drop faster. But most of these big price drops that we see are seeing is from over MSRP to MSRP and potentially a little bit under MSRP. But I guess the last point that I'm gonna make is understand that most manufacturers have raised their invoice prices at a higher rate compared to their MSRP prices. And so dealerships themselves can't discount their new vehicles as much as they could historically because they don't have the markup. And dealerships are for-profit businesses. And so they will only discount vehicles as much as it makes sense for them to you know, not lose a bunch of money in every single car deal and go out of business. And so so it's, it's a weird dynamic, um, but just understand as a customer that the ball at this point, when it comes to what's happening within, you know, the new car market is in the manufacturer court and with the used car market, you're just gonna have to wait over a long period of time, just slowly. You're just gonna have to just sit there day by day as it's just slowly ticking away. Anyways, that's gonna sum things up. I'll see you.